Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the huge voting intention poll that The Telegraph dropped last night. And I'll be co covering two aspects. The first is how it's basically a stitch up. But secondly, how this poll is intended to change the course of the Conservative Party, because there's a concerted move afoot here. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So a huge 14,000 sample MRP voting intention poll dropped in the Telegraph last night with articles published in the Daily Telegraph print version today. Polling produced by YouGov, so one of the pollsters with a very good track record at elections. All sounds great, only it's very, very fishy. Now, it may seem odd me saying, oh, you need to be suspicious of this YouGov poll. But like I said in yesterday's video about a different Servation poll, pay attention to who commissioned the poll doesn't matter who owns the polling company or set it up, forget about that. What matters is who commissioned it and why. So why do I think it's dodgy? Well, first, what we've seen in the Telegraph is not actually YouGov's poll, but an analysis of the poll. Now, is it YouGov's analysis or is it the Telegraph's analysis? Until we see the actual polls published, I'm going to guess that what we've got is the Telegraph stitching up the results, which will be why the clients who commissioned it passed it to them to publish. Second, speaking of the clients, it was commissioned by some Tory donors. Now, this seems curious, doesn't it? Why would Tory donors pay a pollster to show the country that the party they support is going to get its arse handed to it? There are already plenty of polls showing that wouldn't have cost them a bean. But there are some in the Conservative Party who want the Tories to shift even further to the right and keep the focus on Reform UK rather than Labour. A poll showing that the Tories' main threat is from Reform UK, which is what the far right are trying to say, that helps them do that. Third, the details under the bonnet are contradicting all of the main trends and voting distributions in other polls, including the polls YouGov produces for the Times on an almost weekly basis. It's so out of whack that it merits questions. Next, the, the results show that, um, fourth one is that the results show Labour winning 385 seats and the Tories winning 169. Now, you look at that and you go, OK, straight away, in terms of the headline seats, that flatters the Tories based on current trends, but is sort of credible. And people have just looked at those headline figures. Oh, this is why you've got people on both the left and the right, pro-conservative, anti-conservative, all looking at this and go, oh, this signals wipe out for the Tories. Look at the details under the bonnet, because what it also says in this analysis in The Telegraph is that Reform UK will make the difference in 96 seats. Now, this is where it becomes highly suspicious. If Reform UK are going to cost the Tories 96 seats, the Tories are not winning 169 seats. That is nonsense. This poll says that if Reform UK don't stand in the election, if they're persuaded to step aside, the Tories could actually be within striking distance of a shot in the election and that Labour can't get a majority. It's hung Parliament territory with everything to play for. But you might argue, well, this is a huge exercise, Phil. It's got like 14,000 respondents, way more than the one to 2,000 in more regular polls. Yeah, absolutely. All sounds impressive. This is a, this is a proper effort has been made here. So how can I be sure that this clearly detailed poll has it wrong just because it's contradicting the other polls, including YouGov's own weekly ones for the Times. Simple. This isn't a battle of the hypothetical polls. We've had actual polls. We've had people go to elections last year. We've had by-elections. We've had by-elections in leave areas. We've had by-elections in lots of different areas. When Reform UK were doing as well in the polls as they are now, but they didn't do very well at the ballot box. And as I've mentioned before, by-elections are really good for attracting protest votes. So you would have actually expected Reform UK to... The, the vote share for Reform UK in these by-elections should have flattered them. They should have done extra well because they'd be attracting Reform UK voters and Conservative voters who will vote Conservative at the next election but want to send a message to the party at the moment. If Reform UK were on for making the difference in 96 seats and the Tories were still managing to win 169 despite that, 
We would have seen signs of it in by-election results. What we've seen is the opposite. Reform UK results in by-elections have been pathetic, way below that predicted by most pollsters. And the Tories have been obliterated in all but Uxbridge, where their share of the vote still collapsed, only clinging on by a few hundred votes. This poll heavily flatters both Reform UK and the Conservatives in terms of not only all the other polls, which have their own disagreements, but with the by-election results from last year. My fifth reason is that this result is exactly what Conservatives on the far right want to see. There was an instant and obviously coordinated bombardment of social media when the poll dropped last night. All the usual suspects all saying the same things, decrying the booting of Boris Johnson and saying they need to stop the boats or it's all over for the Tories. Basically, these results are exactly what the far right want to see and the timing is also highly suspicious. It is just before a crucial week for the Rwanda bill. Sunak says he will not entertain major amendments tomorrow. The One Nation group of Tory MPs who have roughly the same numbers as the far right, they say they will block any amendments put forward by their swivel-eyed loon colleagues. So taking it all together, what we have is a poll which has results out of kilter with every other poll including the YouGov polls commissioned by the Times. It's greatly at odds with by-election results from last year. It's exactly what the far right wants to believe. And it drops just as their flagship policy is about to be decided in the House of Commons. Now, I don't know anything about the Tory donors who commissioned this poll, but I'm going to hazard a guess that they are in tune with Reform UK and the Tory factions on the right of the party, such as the New Conservatives and ERG. I wouldn't even believe this is a best case scenario for the Conservatives. I don't even think this is an interpretation of the results that's on the optimistic end. This is the most flattering poll I've seen for the Tories for well over a year. As I say, it's not the headline results in terms of seats won and lost. That sort of, you could sort of believe that. It's the combination of the Tories being beaten down to 169 with Reform UK costing them 96. Doesn't, doesn't stack up. Also, there's another bit of very obviously dodgy analysis. So this, this idea that Reform UK would cost the Tories 96 seats, um, which would, and if they stood down, that would put Labour down to 311 seats, uh, which is below a majority, and the Tories on 265 seats, which is, you know, well below a majority, but within striking distance if the polls narrowed further. But it bases that on saying, on assuming that all of those Reform UK voters, if Reform UK did stand, if they didn't stand, would vote Tory instead. But that won't happen. I mean, they'll be lucky in most seats to get half of the Reform UK voters voting Tory. There are loads of Reform UK voters who will just not vote if Reform stand down. Or they'll vote for a local nutter or a different party, right? The more I looked at it, and I was up for a very long time, it disrupted my sleep. But then sleep is for the week. The more out of touch this analysis was, you just look at it more and more, you just go, that's not right, that's not right. And more accomplished polling commentators than I were also very suspicious. They variously identified other issues as well, including unrealistic distribution of don't know votes. It's all very dodgy. We've talked about that with opinion. And also not taking tactical voting into account, even though we know there's loads of it going on. Basically, if you think the headline results in this article look bad for the Tories, think again. This is unrealistically kind to them. So that's my thoughts on the reliability of the poll. Basically, I would say take it with a heavy pinch of salt. I'm not saying the poll is fabricated, although I will say you know, when clients are paying, the pollsters do what the clients want. What I am saying is the analysis is utterly ridiculous. But we haven't seen the polls. The polls haven't been published yet at the time I'm recording this anyway. So we will wait on the actual publication of the tables to see if the analysis was massaged by YouGov at the behest of their clients, which does happen, or if they did their job properly and it was and the analysis was just made up by some hacks with a calculator at the Telegraph, which is why the people who commissioned it didn't publish it themselves, they gave it to the Telegraph. But whether you go along with my thinking or not, the next important question is, what do the commissioners of the report want to do with it? Well, it could actually be one of a few things. The first is obvious. Embolden the far right this week to move against Sunak. If he won't bend, break him. We'll see what happens, I guess. Lee Anderson's already threatened to quit. I'm not sure that's much of a threat because he wasn't any use as deputy chair anyway. He seemed to slag off his own party as much as defend it. 
The second could be to persuade Reform UK that a more extreme Conservative government is possible. See, right now, the polling says Labour are winning a majority. Polls have been saying that before, you know, Reform UK surged last year. So in that case, there's no value in Reform UK standing down. Why would they? If Labour are going to win anyway, it's better to stand against the Tories and then claim that they made the difference so that the next Conservative leadership fears them, works with them in return for standing down in a future election, perhaps. But if they were led to believe that the Tories could win, well, might they be persuaded to stand down in return for certain policies in the manifesto? You know, a bit like last time. You know, like in this case, abolishing all human rights, for example, with uh, maybe the death penalty and uh, possibly a peerage thrown in for Tyson Farage. So the poll may be designed to hoodwink Reform UK into not allowing a Labour government in because, well, you actually have a choice. The third possibility is a variation on that theme, that the Tory donors who commissioned the poll aren't necessarily trying to affect any major change just yet, but sow the seeds that Reform UK is a block on the Tories returning to power, like I've said, Reform have had really shocking results in the by-elections last year, if you compare them to their own hype. This is why they're going hard at Wellingborough with Ben Habib. They're desperate for a strong result. A poll like this can add to the idea that when the Tories get hammered, it was more to do with Reform UK than either Labour or just the public being sick of the Tories. But there we are. I'm bound to cover more on this as the week goes on. Maybe later today we'll have to see if anything mad happens. Something mad may have happened by the time this is published. It does sound to me like there's going to be an almighty bust up this week, though. It was all looking a little bit tame. And then the reaction to this. So we will see. This poll is setting the scene for a showdown. News could be fast moving on this. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.